here's a coin and if you have a coin please take it out and just uh, toss it a couple of times right and when you toss the coin you realize there's two possible things uh, that can happen either the coin lands on heads or the coin lands on tails right so there's two possible outcomes so we're going to list the possible outcomes and we'll just do H for heads T for tails now what is the probability of getting a head what would you say so one way of writing that is P parenthesis H probability of heads equals now there's two possible outcomes so that's two right which is more likely are you more likely to get a head or are you more likely to get a tail these are equally likely aren't they so we actually have equally likely um, outcomes here right and um, so there's and there's two possible so probability of getting ahead wouldn't you agree it is one chance out of two right so it's one half and what's the probability of getting a tail it is one chance out of two now probability can be written as a fraction like that one out of two or as a decimal what's one half as a decimal 0 0.5 right so you could also say the probability of getting a tail is 0 0.5 now probability can also be written as a percent so what's 0 0.5 as a percent so you'd move the decimal point two spaces to the right and that's 50 right so you could also say when you toss a coin the probability of getting a tail is 50% Okay, getting tails fifty percent. So, um, so, so we've already hit upon a few uh, bits of probability theory just with tossing a coin. So let's go to our kind of formula sheet here. So probability theory for equally likely outcomes: probability equals number of favorable outcomes over total number of possible outcomes. In other words, um, here's heads and tails equally likely outcomes and um, to get heads its number of favorable outcomes that's one out of total number of possible outcomes that's two okay and this will make more sense as we do more examples of course so just bear with me so <laughs> if probability equals uh, one half that means we have a half chance of the event occurring right does that make sense um, and that can also be written as um, you know 0 0.5 or 50 percent so you could say 0 0.5 chance or 50 percent chance or whatever right so if if the probability of something equals a quarter um, you could say we have one quarter of a chance right or probability one quarter probability of the event occurring and one quarter is also 0 0.25 so you could say the 0 0.25 chance of the event occurring or 25 percent chance of the event occurring so there's a 25 percent chance uh, a team is going to win a game or a 25% chance it's going to rain today or whatever right and three quarters what would that mean there's a three quarter or 0 0.75 chance of something happening or 75% chance of something happening right of an event whatever it is occurring right now let's go back to the coin example and what is the probability of when you toss a coin what's the probability of getting a head or a tail heads or tails right so um, 
probability of getting heads or tails? Keep tossing the coin. What's any idea? Well, you could kind of say that's two favorable outcomes over two possible outcomes. Two over two. What's two over two? It's also equal to one, right? And um, so you could say the chance of getting heads or tails is one. And uh, because it's, and it's actually, if you toss a coin, you have to get either heads or tails, right? So one is a certain certainty. If probability of an event is one, that's a certainty, right? So it's kind of like um, probability that um, you will die equals what? What's the pr probability that you will die sometime? Or your body. Let's be spiritual about it. That your body will die. You will die definitely one, right? Um, so one, and one can also be written as a percentage. What's one as a percentage? The decimal point is here, and you you got to move it uh, one, two spaces to the right, and add a couple of zeros. So one is 100%, isn't it? 100%. So there's a 100% chance of getting heads or tails. There's a 100% chance you will die. One means that there's a, a one chance or a 100% chance of an event occurring. In other words, the event is certain, right? Absolutely certain. Because there's a 100% chance of the event occurring, right? What's the probability of getting neither heads nor tails? You toss a coin and you get neither heads nor tails. What's the probability of that? Is it even possible to get neither heads nor tails when you toss a coin, right? So what would you say it is? As a number, how could you give that as a number? Probability of getting neither heads nor tails. Well, you could say it's nothing. Zero out of two, right? Or zero. And what's zero as a percentage? Zero percent, right? So, and this is an impossible event. When you toss a coin, you have to either get heads or tails. You can't get neither, right? That's impossible. Uh, so, um, the probability, for example, that you will not die equals what? Like your body, let's say. Let's be spiritual, right? Probability you will not die is equal to zero, because that's impossible, right? Your body's going to die sometime. So, zero percent chance of that happening, right? So, zero means there's a zero or a zero percent chance of something happening. Uh, in other words, the event is impossible, right? Does that make sense? So, probabilities go from zero to one, right? Probabilities are measured zero to one, and th they don't have to be. We could, we could do our probabilities from 10 to 11, or from zero to a hundred, but this is the way the world agrees to do it. Okay, this is how it, it it was first done by the first people that did it, and everybody follows along. And so that that's just there's there's no reason why it has to go from zero to one, but that's the way it's used. So all the probabilities we're going to do are going to be measured in numbers from zero to one, or of course in and and, and as one is a hundred percent, you see, it could be measured in percentages from zero to a hundred percent, right? So let's do example two. Suppose there are six. Oh, sorry. One last thing we need to look at is. Sorry, last thing. The probability of not getting heads. So the probability of an event not occurring. Probability of not getting a head. Okay. Is in this case equal to the probability of. 
getting a tail, right? Um, so that's a half, and probability of not getting a tail equals what? So these probabilities are one half, right? Probability of not getting a tail would be the same as probability of getting a head, so that'd be half, right? So going to example two, suppose there are six crayons in a box, four blue and two yellow. A crayon is selected at random, list the possible outcomes. Um, so, well I guess you could either get blue or you could get yellow. And if you want, you could also list the outcomes like this. Blue, 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 blue. Four blue crayons and then Y, Y for two yellow crayons, right? And uh, here they are. Four blue crayons and two yellow crayons, right? So when I a crayon is selected at random from a box, what is the probability the crayon is blue? So if I put these crayons into a box, right? Shake them up, don't look at it, but just uh, put my hand in there and pick one out at random, what's the probability it's going to be blue? And what's the probability it's going to be yellow? Can you do that? Probability of the crayon will be blue, probability of the crayon will be yellow. Oh, got another yellow one. There's a the blue one. So what's the chance, which is more likely? Am I more likely to pick out a blue one or more likely to pick out a yellow one? Which is more likely? Well, blue is more likely. What's the probability, you th do you think? The chance that I'll get a blue crayon when I pick one out. Well, there's four blue crayons. There's two yellows. So there's six total, right? So there's six total outcomes. The probability of getting a blue crayon is... Wouldn't you say four chances out of six? So that's once again number of favorable outcomes over total number of possible. That's four favorable out of six possible. So four favorable crayons out of six possible. And how do you can we simplify that? Four six equals two thirds, right? So a two thirds chance. And what's the probability of picking out a yellow crayon? If you select it. A crayon at random from the box. Well, there's two chances out of six, which can also be written one third. So there's one third chance of drawing a yellow crayon. Now, do this one. What's the probability of drawing a red crayon? So there's four blue crayons and two yellows in a box. Put my hand in and I just select one crayon at random. What's the probability? that that crayon is going to be red. <coughs> Any idea? Probability it's going to be red? Zero chances out of six, right? Or zero as a percentage, zero percent chance, right? What's the probability that the crayon will be either blue or yellow? Probability it'll be blue or yellow. Any idea? Well, it has to be either blue or yellow, right? Can't be anything else. So the chance, the probability that I'll pick a crayon that's blue or yellow is six out of six, right? Six out of six chance, which is also can be written. 1, or as a percentage, 100%. So I have 100% chance of picking a crayon that's either blue or yellow, because there's only blue and yellows in the box, right? So what's the probability of getting a crayon that's not blue, and what's the probability of getting a crayon that's not yellow? Write down the answer. Probability of getting one that's not blue would be the same as probability of getting one that's yellow, right? 
So that would end up being one third. What's the probability of getting a crayon that's not yellow? Well, that'd be the same as getting a, getting a crayon that's blue, which would be chances of that two thirds, right? Okay, so let's go to example three. More crayons. Suppose there are 13 crayons in a box, five blue, three red, three green, two yellow. Okay, a crayon is selected at random. List all possible outcomes. So here they are. Five blue crayons, three red crayons, one, two, three, three green crayons, and two yellow crayons. Right? So that makes 13 altogether, doesn't it? So all the possible outcomes there, well, there's five blues, one, two, three, four, five. There's three reds, red, red, red. There's three greens, green, green, green. And there's two yellows, yellow, yellow, right? You can think of it that way. So it's 13 total, right? What is the probability the crayon is blue? Any idea? So all these crayons are going into a box. I'm going to draw one at random. What's the probability the crayon will be blue? So we could write probability the crayon is blue equals how about one, two, three, four, five chances out of 13, right? Five chances out of 13. So we put the crayons into a box. Select one at random. Select one at random. The probability the crayon is blue is going to be five chances out of thirteen. Okay. What's the probability the crayon will be yellow? What's the probability the crayon will be red, then green, then black? So let's just do these next. What's the probability the crayon will be yellow, red, green, or black? One at a time. Press pause if you need more time. Okay, so we're selecting crayons at random. Okay, I'll do it now. So probability of getting a yellow crayon, two chances out of 13, right? Probability of getting a red crayon, three chances out of 13. Probability of getting a green crayon, Three chances out of 13, and probability of getting a black crayon. Did you get that? What's the probability of choosing a black crayon if you've got five blues, three reds, three greens, and two yellows in a box? What's the chance that you'll actually pull out a black crayon? Well, zero chances out of 13, right? Which is also equal to zero or zero percent. So this event is impossible, right? This is an impossible event, right? Okay, what are the chances that the crayon is blue or yellow? Write down the answer. Probability of the crayon being blue or yellow. Any idea? Well, if we just wanted a, a crayon that's either blue or yellow, that's five blues and two yellows. Okay, so that's seven chances out of 13. Does that make sense? And um, this of course could also be written, you know, the chance of a blue one, 5 thirteenths, plus the chance of a yellow one, 2 thirteenths. So 7 chances out of 13. What's the probability of picking a crayon that's either blue or green? So I don't care what I get as long as it's either blue or green. Okay, what's the probability of that? So I'm happy there. And no, don't want a yellow one, don't want that. I want blue or green. What's the probability of picking out? Oh, that's fine, that'll do, that's green, right? What's the probability of picking a crayon that's blue or green? That's fine too. So we've got five blues, three greens. So that's five plus three. That amount of chances out of 13. So that's eight out of 13, right? What's the probability of picking a crayon that's red or blue?
probability of getting one that's red or blue and then yellow or green. What do you get for these? Press pause if you need more time. Okay, I'll do it now. So I get in either red or blue. Red, there's three reds. There's five blues, so that's three plus five out of thirteen. The chances of getting a crayon that's red or blue is eight out of thirteen. Did you do this one now? Press pause, get yellow or green. What's the chances of that? Probability of selecting a crayon that's either yellow or green is well there's two yellows. There's three greens, so that's two plus three out of thirteen. That is five out of thirteen, right? What's the probability of selecting a crayon that is not blue? Any idea? So if you want a crayon that's not blue, that means you're happy with red, green, or yellow, just not blue. Anything as long as it's not blue, right? So that would be chances of getting a red one, three, chances of getting a green one, three, chances of getting a yellow one, two out of thirteen. Okay? So that's six plus two is eight. Uh, so that's eight out of thirteen. Now, what's the probability of getting a crayon that's not yellow? Not yellow? Write down the answer. So you're happy with any color, but not yellow. You could get blue, red, or green, right? So blue, th five, red, uh, three, green, three out of 13. And that's eight, 11 out of 13. Okay. So I'm going to show you another way to get this so we just understand a little bit of probability theory. The probability of getting a color that's not blue is in fact equal to 1 minus the probability of getting a crayon that is blue. Does that make sense? Because this is, you're saying that, you know, the crayon can either be blue or not blue, right? There's only, that, 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 uh, there's two possibilities. A crayon can either be blue or not blue. And so if I do this, I'll get one minus. Now what's the probability of getting a blue crayon? It's five out of thirteen. So one minus five thirteenths, which of course is thirteen minus five thirteen thirteenths minus five thirteenths, which of course is eight thirteenths, right? So probability of not blue is 1 minus probability of blue which is 8 thirteenths, right? So let's do it for not yellow. The probability of getting a crayon that's not yellow is in fact 1 minus the probability of getting a crayon that is yellow which is 1 minus, what's the probability of getting a yellow crayon? 2 thirteenths, right? Or in other words um, 13 thirteenths minus 2 thirteenths, uh, which is 11 thirteenths, which matches our previous answer, right? So just for fun, the probability of getting a crayon that's not red is, in fact, 1 minus the probability of getting a crayon that is red, okay? And what's the probability of getting a crayon that is red? three thirteenths or three out of thirteen, right? So do you believe this that the probability of not getting a red crayon equals one minus probability of getting a red crayon, so it's thirteen thirteenths minus three thirteenths, ten thirteenths, right? So do this one now with the with this method. What's the probability of getting a not green crayon? So you can either you you know get the answer in your head and stuff, but I want you to write this one down. Write down this 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 way. So we learn another piece of probability theory, right? The probability of an event not occurring equals one minus the probability of that event occurring, right? So um, because the event either has to occur or not occur, right? and that they should add to 1. So probability of getting a green crayon again is 3 thirteenths and 1 can be written as 13 thirteenths. So again probability of getting a crayon that's not green is 10 out of 13. Okay. So once again you'll notice that 
So probability getting a green crayon is 3 thirteenths, probability getting a not green crayon is 10 thirteenths, and these ha add up to 1. They add to 13 thirteenths or 1, because the event either has to occur or not occur. So if we go to probability theory, we can see that the probability of an event not occurring equals 1 minus the probability of the event actually occurring. In other words, um, you could say if if um, if if the probability that it's not going to rain today is um, is seventy percent, let's say, right? That would be equal to one minus the probability that it is going to rain. It's not going to rain that it will rain, right? And if if the probability that it's not going to rain is seventy percent, what's the probability that it will rain? Thirty percent, right? And please don't be confused by this. What's one as a percentage? Come on guys, we can do this. One as a percentage is one hundred percent, right? So what we we're looking at here is seventy percent equals 100% minus 30%. Is that true? That's true, isn't it? I'm just trying to show you that probability of an event not occurring equals 1 minus the probability that it will occur, right? So, any case, back to the um, example. So, what is the probability that the crayon you get will be neither red nor blue? And then what's the probability the crane you pick will be neither green or red? Press pause and do that. Okay, probability crayon will be neither red nor blue. Means it could be not red or blue, but it could be green or yellow. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five out of thirteen, right? And probability that crayon will be neither green nor red. So you got one, two, three greens, one, two, three reds, green, oh, and this is wrong, sorry, I'm wrong, sorry, duh, probability neither red nor blue equals the same as probability of getting a green or a yellow, sorry, right, oh, I did that, didn't I, that, yeah, okay, so it is 5 over 13, isn't it? Okay, so, sorry, what's the probability of getting neither green or red then? That's the same as probability of getting not green or red, getting blue or yellow, right? Which is? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 blues, 2 yellows, 7 out of 13, right? 